Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming using Scala. In this video, we're going to apply the networking that we've been talking about, and we're going to start off by writing, uh, we're going to write a little network game, and we're going to do it the first time in using RMI. And the game that I want to write is one that has appeared throughout the, the textbook in a few places, and it's the, uh, the game of Tron Light Cycles based on the original uh, Tron movie in which you all of the light cycles move at right angles. Um, allowing the light cycles to move in random directions would be a, a fair bit more challenging. Uh, so we're just going to go with, with standard right angles. And we want to make it so that this game is networked. So we'll start off. We'll make a... Uh, it's actually... Go ahead and make a package for this. Nettron for Networktron. And put everything inside of here. I'll close out some of these. Okay. Now, I'm going to write this in a way that is a uh, a client server style. Um, the idea here is so you could make this so it's it's a peer to peer style of, of of game where the the two sides act kind of as as equals. Um, I want to do this as a client server where the game itself is played on the client and the or well, the humans are running the a client and there's a server someplace that in some ways the game is actually going to be run on the server itself. So we'll create a new Scala application. Let's go with an RMI Tron server. Now, remember the steps for doing RMI. The first thing that we're going to have to do is we have to have our completely abstract trait uh, that is Let's just call this Tron server. That extends remote. And in addition to that, we need to put inside of our uh, all of our methods that we want. So what are the methods that we can have? What should you be able to do with our server? Well, one is that you should be able to log in to the server, connect to it. Now, if I were going to push this further, so if this weren't in the short format of the videos, I would have it so that lots of users could connect and you could pick other opponents and, and stuff like that. I want to keep this short for here. So the first user that connects is player one, the second user that connects is player two. Anyone else who connects after that doesn't get to play. Um, that's how we're going to, to write the server for, for this. So um, when you connect, you pass in a Tron client. We'll have to write, create a type for that, and we'll do that in just a second. And this is going to return to you an int for your player number. That'll just be how you identify yourself uh, in future uh, interactions with the server. And remember that all of these need to be able to say that they throw class of remote exception. Okay, so all of these have the ability to produce a remote exception. Let's go ahead and let's create the RMI Tron client object. And we can put in the beginnings of our trait for this. come back to there, save that, save this side, and there we go. Okay, so now we don't have any errors. What else can the clients tell the server? Well, the client should be able to tell the server the things that are of significance. Turns out the server is going to be doing the updating, bikes move forward, bike move forward, bike move forward, 
All that the clients need to be able to do is possibly say, go. Um, and we could even get rid of that if we just have it so that after the second user connects, there's there's a, a brief pause and then it, it goes ahead and starts. So the other thing that we need, really the only thing that users can do in Tron is turn. Um, and so we could make two of these, a turn left, and I'm going to make it so that when you do this, you tell them which player you are. By the way, I'm not writing this in any type of way that is highly secure, or even lightly secure. Uh, it would be very easy to write a, um, a different client that spoofs this and, and kills the other player. Uh, so I'm not trying, I'm putting in no effort whatsoever to avoid that possibility. So we'll go ahead and def main inside of here. We will also make it so that this uh, is an implementation of our interface. Uh, so step number one was we make our interface with the methods that we can call remotely. Step number two is we make an implementation of it and that implementation also has to extend one of these server types. And in our case, we did the unicast remote object. Okay, so okay, uh, blip, 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 copy, paste, and we'll have to put in implementations here, but for now. I can just put in blank methods. With my little to-do markers, which will of course be marked over here and added to my task list. Um, and I like having that task list to keep track of, of what needs to be done. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to do here? What does our Tron server need to keep track of? So you might, if you did the uh, Tron games previously, you know that you have a buffered image and that buffered image just keeps getting, uh, just is continually written out to, to the screen. And uh, that image is is basically storing the individual pixels. You use get RGB and set RGB to to poke into it and then to read out of it. <clears throat> but we have one minor problem with that here. Remember that, and this is going to be a problem whether we use RMI or whether we use the standard networking. Buffered image is not serializable. Okay, so so we have to find some way around that. We need to have have it so we can pass this information because the way that this is that we're writing this right now. The users connect, um, and then they can tell the server that they turn left and turn right, and the server is going to play the game. So inside of this main here, we're going to have a thread that uh, runs through, or a timer that repeats every so often, and um, makes the, the bikes move forward, move forward, move forward. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's what's going to go inside of here. Every time they move forward though, they have to send a message to the clients because the clients are actually going to be doing the graphics. So perhaps we should start writing our clients. Extends unicast remote object with a Tron client and do an import, and just because I don't feel like retyping this throws clause, we'll come back to there. Okay, so what can the server tell the client? Well, um, server can tell the client a few things, one of which would be uh, we want a countdown I guess for for the game starting uh, and I'm going to make this so that it takes an integer countdown 
the idea here is that when the second user connects, the game is going, the server is going to start this countdown, and this should be sent to the client so that the client can display that number and the users know when they're about to go. Okay. Uh, it would also be nice if the users know when the game ends. And let's also pass in a winner. And once again, the players are being identified by just the integer number of what they what they have. We'll actually probably go with zero and one because everything is zero referenced instead of one and two. Um, what else? So the game starts, the game ends, and then every single tick, we need to send information for the game taking a step. Okay. And then the question is, what goes in here? What arguments are we going to pass to the clients when a step is taken? We need the information that can be used to reconstruct the entire play surface. And in some ways, <clears throat> it would be fairly easy if this were just a buffered image. And the easiest way to do this would just be to say image buffered image. The only problem with that is, as I mentioned earlier, buffered image is not serializable. So I can't do this. Okay. Even if I could do this, it's not necessarily the ideal way of doing this because we're going over a network. So you might be tempted to do a, the board. Okay, we're going to take our buffered image and instead of passing it through as a buffered image, we're going to pass it through as a two-dimensional array. So an array of array of, well, we could pass it as ints, which would be RGB values, and it would be very easy to convert from this to a buffered array or to a buffered image and back and forth. Um, Okay, this would be a possibility. However, it turns out when you really play Tron, the vast majority of these things are going to be blank. They're going to be empty. Um, so this is a reasonable first approach to do this. Uh, maybe something better would be to pass in, instead of a board, to pass in two colors uh, or two arrays and make it so that each array is a tuple of int comma int. This works well as long as the board stays fairly open. So we're only going to pass the coordinates of the pixels that are filled in. So we'll pass in one set for player one and another set for player two. Okay, and then when we build our image, we color the whole image black and then we run through all of these and set the color to player one's color and run through all of those and set the color to player two's color. That would be a, a more efficient implementation. And at least actually for now, I think this is the one that I will go ahead and go with. Um, in fact, I will probably decide instead of going with an array, let's go with a buffer because I'm actually gonna store, if I store things this way, I'm going to store them as, as a buffer, so this will be a mutable dot buffer. And then we can come up here and import collection dot mutable. Okay. And then that would tell the client to rewrite things. So copy, paste down here. And all of these are returning unit. The clients aren't really saying anything back to the server for this implementation, the way we're writing it right now. Def main args is an array of string. And so then inside of the client, we need to set up a GUI. We need to have it so that there's a panel that paints itself and all it's gonna draw is some image uh, and that image will be every time this is called it'll be filled in and we'll repaint it. Okay so this kind of sets up the beginnings of things and I'm going to stop this video now and we'll come back in the next video and we'll add a little bit more. It'll probably take us a few videos to get through and have something that's actually a fully working implementation. So see you again soon.